Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Shash and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use YouTube ads for high ticket call funnels. What is a high ticket call funnel? That might be the first question you ask. So basically a call funnel is a funnel where your goal is to get a phone call with a sales rep. So you want your customer to watch a VSL or webinar, then get on the phone with a sales rep or perhaps you, and then you sell them on whatever your product or service is. Now, phone sales are amazing for anything that's priced over $3,000 in my experience. I've found that selling products from you know, $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 to $20,000, $30,000 is best done over the phone as opposed to using auto webinars or more automated methods of selling. So the reason I want to cover this topic is I'm seeing more and more of these funnels and more and more people trying to use YouTube ads with these high ticket call funnels. So I want to cover, you know, what are the big things you want to be focused on when running YouTube ads for high ticket funnels, as well as show you how to set up a basic YouTube ad campaign for your high ticket phone funnel. So I want to go over a couple different uh, key things before we get into the YouTube ads portion. Number one is there are usually two popular ways of running a high ticket closed funnel, which is number one, you send them to an opt-in for a 15 to 20 minute video sales letter, which is basically, you know, gives, uh, convinces them to get on the call, right? Like goes over your business model, shows social proof, shows them why they should jump on, on board this opportunity. And really the goal is to get the phone close. And then once you get them on the phone, that's when you sell them. Now, the other alternate option that I've seen a lot is actually put people through an automated webinar, which is one and a half, two hours long and basically goes over the opportunity, does the same thing as a VSL, is a lot longer so the people who book a call from the webinar are typically going to be a bit more qualified. Now, in my personal experience, you should always start with a video sales letter and then experiment with the webinar later because what we found is the VSL is much easier to create, much easier to optimize because it's shorter. So every time you need to do a view, new VSL, it, it's only going to take you like five to six hours to create a new VSL. On the other hand, if you're creating a webinar, there are times when people take a month to create a webinar. Webinars are hard, harder to create because it's two hours long and you have to just make sure every part is perfect. On the other hand, I prefer to get started with a video sales letter, a 20 minute video, uh, and then you basically use that to sell, uh, get them on the phone and then sell them your product or service. And obviously it goes without saying, but you need to have good sales, uh, sales skills as well to close these people on the phone. So you either need to be a great salesperson and then teach other salespeople to do the same, or you have to find somebody who's already a great salesperson and can sell your product or service. So a really great course I recommend for this is Up Level uh, Consulting by Sam Owens, which goes very deep into this business model and how to make it work. Um, but yeah, let's get started, let's get into this and show you how we can make YouTube ads work for your VSL or high ticket closed funnel. So we've already covered what a VSL funnel is. This was actually the results of uh, one client uh, in the previous month where we generated over 3,700 calls at a, and this is in Canadian, at $50 a call. We spent a lot of money, but we got a lot of results. And they were extremely, extremely, extremely profitable to the point where, you know, it was, it was just ridiculous. So those are the kind of results you can get with YouTube. When the YouTube algorithm is dialed in, you can just get calls on auto, autopilot. And if you have the systems for it, you can just be taking like 100 calls a day, 150 calls a day. Uh, so there's a ton of opportunity with this. Now, why should you do this with YouTube ads and not Facebook ads? Well, if you're like most high ticket sellers, you're probably doing Facebook ads. Facebook ads is good to start with, uh, but YouTube is really where you can scale heavily. And here's the thing, you want to be diversified. So one of the key reasons to diversify to YouTube ads is the fact that if you're reliant on one ad platform, especially Facebook, you're opening yourself up to some major, major potential uh, issues, right? Because your ad account could get suspended, ad costs are always going up, your ads could get disproved, the algorithm could go crazy. It's just not good business practice to just rely on one source of leads, which is why I love YouTube ads. It's a great way to diversify from Facebook. Now, here's the thing. Google is a lot less ban happy. It's a lot harder to get your ad account banned or suspended. On Facebook, you get suspended for no reason, like automated bans and suspensions. Literally, um, 
people with very legitimate businesses get suspended from Facebook all the time and then they're not able to run ads and then it's just a whole mess. So Google is a lot less ban happy. They respect their advertisers a lot more. I like working with Google more because they actually like their advertisers while Facebook treats them pretty badly. One thing to keep in mind also is with Google, their support is far more transparent. They're just uh, able to help you out. Even if you do get a suspension, you're able to sort it out very quickly. Now, the other thing about YouTube is you can spend a lot of money. You can easily spend 10K a day. You can spend as much, if not more, than on Facebook, on Google, and just get a great return on ad spend as well. So the other thing I love about YouTube ads is the targeting allows you to get really qualified leads because you're targeting people who are watching educational videos you're watching you're targeting people who are learning about your uh industry right so if you're let's say a high ticket coach and you teach high performance there are people watching that all day every day on youtube they're they're watching videos by all these um all these youtubers on how to be a higher performer so you are gener generating leads and you're generating leads that are qualified because these are people who are very interested in exactly what you teach and what you do Again, uh, to show you another example of another ad account where we spent over $2 million, um, you can get some pretty insane results. You can generate millions and millions of dollars with YouTube ads. Now, what to expect? Look, I'll be honest, there is a learning curve, right? There's a pretty big learning curve. Um, one and a half to two months is what I'd give yourself to get it really dialed in. You don't just go on YouTube and start running campaigns and just be profitable right off the bat. It, it is an ad platform and you just have to learn how to use it. Uh, just like with Facebook, there's an algorithm that you have to learn to work with and it takes time to kick in. You need at least 50 leads before you can start using target CPA, which is my preferred form of bidding. It's a form of bidding, which is kind of like Facebook's conversion optimization and it works really, really well. So yeah, again, like with the algorithm as well, it takes time to kick in. So it takes a month and a half. Um, I also recommend duplicating your funnel for YouTube. So I want to make sure you have a separate funnel for YouTube just so you can just completely have everything separated. So have a separate funnel, separate email automations, uh, separate list. And that way, when you get on the phone with somebody and you post them, you know 100%, oh, this was a lead that came in from YouTube, right? This was a YouTube lead that I got here. So that just allows things to be a lot easier on your tracking side, especially with high ticket sales, because you're doing these phone calls, selling these $5,000 offers, and you don't know where they came from because you know it's just you just need to have very clean tracking so you can track the last, final sale back to the initial point of uh, contact. So one thing to keep in mind is Facebook is easier to get started with, but YouTube is far easier to scale to five to $10,000 a day with. Facebook is really more of a beginner's platform, right? You can get to $300 a day very easily and profitably. YouTube requires work to get to $300 a day profitably. It requires a lot of work, requires a lot of uh, testing. But once you get YouTube working, it's so easy to scale to five to $10,000 a day. It is ridiculously easy. Like overnight, you can get to 10 grand a day. Now, shooting your first video ad, right? Like that's the first thing you want to start out with, right? Is you want to get your first video ad shot. So the mindset you need to make this work is that your first video ad doesn't have to be great. It just needs to work. It just needs to be good enough. So don't worry about spending 10 days on it. Just set aside an afternoon, a few hours, and you can shoot a few video ads. And here's the thing, after a few tries, you're gonna get into the zone and you're gonna be able to communicate effectively. Um, just requires a little bit of work initially. The goal initially is data. You want to get your video ads shot and you want to get them up and running because ultimately you want to buy data and then that data you buy, you can make further improvements with, right? Initially, you don't want to spend too much effort on shooting the ads. You just want to get started. So the first video ad is just going to be imperfect. The goal is to make something good so you can get it up and running as soon as possible. Now, how do you script your first video ad? So the base structure of scripting a video ad works like this. You have the hook in which you grab her attention, right? So the hook is essentially something you do to grab her attention. It could be something like you pounding your uh, fist on the table, you jumping out, or you being like, a hook could even be something like you just being like, hey, are you, um, are you with my target audience? So it could be something like, hey, do you want to learn how to run YouTube ads? That could be the hook because that grabs attention of 
anybody who's watching it and is it in the target audience. The goal of the hook is to grab your ideal audience's interest and keep that interest, right? So they watch the rest of the video ad. Now, after the hook, you have qualification, which is where you basically call your ideal audience out. Um, you basically tell them, hey, um, if you are, let's say, an e-commerce or info product business owner that wants to sell with YouTube ads, uh, keep watching this video. If not, skip. You want people who are not in your target audience to skip. You want to grab the attention of the people who are interested, get them to keep watching. The reason you want to do this is in a lot of cases, you know, you're paying for these ads after 30 seconds, right? If they watch 30 seconds. So you want people who are unqualified to not watch it. We actually prefer lower view rates, right? We actually prefer it when uh, the number of people who get to 30 seconds is lower than 20%. If it's too high, then your ad costs are just going to be super high. So we want our only our target audience to watch, which is why we call them out and tell them, tell the others to skip. Now, after that, you actually go into your offer um, and you could also go into social proof. So as you see here, there's a results slash social proof. You can put that after qualification, which is done a lot. Um, but basically, at a certain point, you want to go into what you're actually offering, right? And that should be something like, hey, um, I have a free training on Amazon FBA. Um, and then actually be like, click the link above or below. And why should you listen to me? It's because I have generated X, Y, Z results. So for example, an example ad would be, Hey, are you an info product or e-commerce business owner that's tired of how competitive Facebook ads are? That's the hook, grabbing their attention. If you're not a business owner, skip this ad. So that's qualification, telling them to skip this ad if they're not in my target audience. Then be like, hey guys, uh, and this is actually, I would put the social proof before in this case, but I would say something like, hey guys, I run a seven-figure YouTube ad agency and I'm going to teach you how to... Uh, run YouTube ads for your business. So you're describing what you're offering. And I actually have worked with XYZ clients. Here's results of my students. So that's the results slash social proof. Tell them to click above or below. And um, and then you might want to bust some objections or also describe your offer in more detail. So essentially the goal is you want to, within one minute to one and a half minutes, you want to just um, you know get their attention, tell them what you're offering, show them the credibility and the proof that you're legitimate. Uh, tell them to click on the link, tell them a bit more of the offer for people who are still not convinced, and then tell them to click on the link again. And then you can mix these pieces around. Really, the goal is to uh, is to just get something up and running that has these elements. And yeah, I have other videos on how to shoot and script video ads that you can check on my channel that go a lot more in depth into how to script your first video ad. So here are some really important things to remember as well when you're shooting your first video ad. Um, tell them exactly what to do after they click, right? It should be something like, hey, click this link and then sign up for my webinar on the next page, right? Like you want to tell them exactly what to do once they click your link. You need to tell them to click above or below because in some cases the link will be above, the link will be below um, because of the basically depends on the platform, uh, if it's mobile or desktop. And then you want to edit in arrows that point towards the call to action. So you want to have an arrow that's... Uh, basically pointing towards the link on desktop and mobile and use the ad preview tool to see exactly where the CTAs will be to make sure the arrows are in the right place, right? So there is an ad preview tool. Uh, all right, so I'll show you where the ad preview tool is. You go in here to ads and you just need to upload it to YouTube so you can see what it looks like. And then you click here and you can see this preview ad, right? So you can see mobile versus desktop, and you can see exactly where the call to action is. So this is really useful. So you just upload your basic video, and then you can see this. And then, uh, you know, basically, here I, uh, I would have arrows uh, pointing towards, there will be a link to click here, um, but yeah. So, yeah, so that's how you kind of get the ad set up. Now, how do you shoot your video ad? So if you're using your phone without a mic, make sure you avoid a lot of shake, right? Like if you're using a, like an iPhone or whatever, keep your hand somewhat steady, like a little bit of shake is okay, but if it's just like all over the place, it's not gonna be great. Uh, I also recommend using a mic. For example, I'm using this uh, mic right now. I believe it's a lavalier mic, and basically it allows the audio to be a lot better. So even if you're shooting with your iPhone, you can still have this mic set up, and that way, you know, your audio quality is gonna be good. Um, you want to hire a video editor if possible to help kind of 
edit the video. You could do it yourself if you have the skill, but I prefer hiring a video editor. And give yourself a couple hours to get the first video ad right. The first time you're shooting a video ad, it's just going to be a little awkward. You'll need some time to get into it. After a few hours, I think things will work pretty well. Now, an easy way to add a few variations to split test with are trying different hooks. So, you know, in one video, saying something, one thing to open the video ad, and then in another video, saying something else, right? You can also try different hooks. So it could be like the first hook could be you pounding your hand on the table like Alex Becker does and, you know, saying whatever you have to say. Another hook could be perhaps you uh, you just literally showing your screen and showing your, you know, kind of your results to open it, being like, hey, guys, do you want to uh, see what YouTube ads can do? Check this out and then show them the screen of your uh, you know, ad account or whatever. So that's one option. Um, you could also do indoor versus outdoor. So you could do the same script, but in different settings. So I did that today, earlier today, when I was shooting some video ads for myself. I did a video ad in the pool. I did a video ad you know, outside the pool. So that's also a really good idea. Now, after that, what you do is once you have your finished video, um, finished ad, you upload it to YouTube. So you go in here and what you'll do is click this button right here, upload video and set it up as unlisted. So you want to set it up as an unlisted video ad. Um, and then obviously once you do that, you can put it into Google ads and use the preview tool to preview it and see what it looks like and so on. All right. So the next step is to set up tracking, right? So I want to make sure Google ads tracking is set up so you can measure your conversions, make measure things that happen. Um, the, basically the things you want to set up tracking for are leads. So people who are opting in and booking calls, you can also try to track sales, but that's a lot trickier. And that's something I only recommend doing as an advanced thing, because if you're taking phone sales, right, then you need something like um, another, you know, proper tracking solution, or you need to use Google click IDs, or you need to, you need to do some more advanced stuff, or you need to have a really clean tracking setup. In many cases, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. So we'll just focus on leads and booking calls for now, right? So what you do is you want to add the code for your, uh, for that to the thank you page for, uh, so let's say if they opt in, right? Usually what happens when somebody opts in for a VSL or a, a webinar funnel is they're taken to a thank you page or if it's a VSL page, they're taken to the actual VSL. So you wanna have that conversion set up on that page. So when they land on that, that conversion fires. And then for the book call page is when they submit their, uh, you know, they book the call and they click on the next page to either fill out the survey or to just confirm, you know, just basically the thank you page for the book call page. So the way you set up Google ads conversions is you go in here and you click in new conversion um, event and you'll click website, you call it lead and don't use a value because it's a lead. And you'll want to do this because it's uh, you don't want to count every single one. This is only for e-commerce store. This is the one I recommend for info and uh, VSL funnels. Um, conversion window, this looks good. And uh, the thing with the attribution, last uh, attribution model is only available for search network and shopping ads. So it doesn't really matter for YouTube ads, something most people didn't know. And then you click create and continue. Then you have three options. Um, you can use Google Tag Manager, in which case you go inside Google Tag Manager. It's very simple to set up. You can install the tag yourself and you have to follow the instructions in here. This is a bit more complicated or you can email this to your webmaster. So whatever option works for you, you want to make sure it's on the thank you page for the lead action. Same thing for the book call. You want to make sure you have it on the thank you page for when they book the call. So, you know, that's like a little bit on, uh, on tracking. Um, now here's the thing. I highly recommend using Google tag manager wherever you can because um, I don't know if you guys know what Google Tag Manager is, but it allows you to manage all of your, uh, you know, tracking codes and pixels. So like the Facebook pixel, Google pixel, et cetera, they can all be managed through Google Tag Manager. So instead of you having to, you know, go into your website's code 
you just go log into Google Tag Manager and you can make these changes without a developer. So it's just really awesome for just keeping your stuff organized and it just uh, also helps you keep have a clean setup because with Google Tag Manager, you can remove a pixel in one go and you can add a pixel in one go to all of your pages on your website. While if you're doing it with a hard-coded website, a lot of times you know, you'll remove some of the pages but you won't be able to remove others and it just turns into a mess. Um, and yet yeah, with ClickFunnels as well, it's fairly easy to set up tracking. Um, so here's the thing. I don't want to go into how to set up tracking for every platform because that's gonna take like 45 minutes. But if you go on YouTube and look up how to set up uh, Google Ads tracking on Shopify, how to set up Google Ads tracking on ClickFunnels, whatever platform you have, you'll get that. And worst case scenario, you just hire somebody from Upwork, pay them a hundred bucks to set it up for you. But honestly, this is not too difficult to do. Now we're actually getting into the actual YouTube ads, right? So you have your video ad shot, it's ready to be ran as an ad, and you want to actually start running ads. You want to actually start like, you know, getting some traffic, seeing how it works and so on. So here's the thing. The first thing is we're gonna use keyword ads. So what is uh, keyword targeting on YouTube? Keyword targeting basically takes the metadata of the video and you know, if the video has, let's say, uh, certain keywords in the title, in the description, in the tags, basically you'll be able to target that keyword. So the way we do uh, keyword targeting is, so let's say your niche is how to train dogs, right? So you wanna search up these, you wanna think of the big keywords in your niche and then put them into the YouTube search tool. Now, the thing that's gonna do is it's gonna show you a bunch of suggestions. So some of these are good to, good to see because then you can start excluding videos, right? Like if you see how to train dogs in Hindi, you now, you now know that, hey, if you see uh, your ad showing up on those kind of videos, you can exclude them using placements. But then the others is like how to train dogs to poop outside. So that's a useful keyword. That's even an ad you could create around that. How to train your dogs not to bite, how to train dogs not to do tricks. So you can collect a bunch of these keywords. Another way to find great keywords is dog, you know, like look at the results so dog training 101, right? That's like a potential keyword. Um, you know, looking at the names, names of these titles, you can come up with some really good keyword ideas, right? Cool tricks to teach your dog, how to train your puppy. So you're getting a lot of keyword ideas from this. Now you wanna basically, what you wanna do is you wanna group these keywords into four to five tightly grouped uh, groups, right? So for example, if you have a bunch of keywords that are related to puppies, you wanna have that in one group. Um, if you have keywords related to um, dog, uh, let's say, just like the um, how to train dogs to do tricks and there's like four or five keywords related to that, like how to train your dog to do X trick, how to train your dog to do a uh, rollover, um, sit, etc., then that could be a keyword group. You wanna keep these keyword groups thematically tight um, because we'll be using these keywords in the campaigns. And then, Basically, you know, hopefully you'll have a few video ads, but then what you do is um, you'll go into your campaign and um, you'll create a new campaign here. Initially, you want to do product and brand consideration because we're doing CPV. So CPV is cost per view bidding. And that's kind of like the first way we start with the video ads. And then we switch over to uh, CPA, which is target CPA which is cost per action. So we go in here, click on influence consideration, video, product and brand consideration, click continue. And then you can call this video, uh, you wanna name your campaign such as, I usually do it LD, which is my agency's name. And then you wanna have your uh, targeting and the funnel. So it's let's say how to train your dog, dog via self funnel. Anyways, you get the idea, right? You want it to be very clear. Now for budget and dates, you wanna do a daily and you wanna set your daily budget. Usually start with $25 a day. Bidding strategy should be maximum CPV. And then you wanna click on um, YouTube videos for now, right? And then you wanna choose your location, languages as well. Um, especially if you're outside of the US, you wanna make sure you're doing English if you're selling an English offer and you wanna have your ad group name, and this is where you add the keywords, right? You wanna add in, let's say, let's say we've discovered, kind of brainstormed a bunch of keywords, and then, uh, so that's what you wanna do. You wanna do keywords, and you want to put four to five keywords into this ad group, right? 
So, so now you have four keywords and you want to set your maximum CPV bid. I usually go with around 0.2 is usually like a good bid to start with and then you can go lower and higher based on what you're actually seeing. And then you want to actually paste the video ad in here. So just paste the URL and then you basically create the campaign. So that's how you create your campaign. So the reason we're doing this is keywords allow you to target videos based on their metadata. So you're gonna get just get uh, be targeting videos related to dog training. And you wanna have four to five keywords per ad group. And then you wanna have one ad group per campaign, right? So here's the other thing I also want to really explain is this is just one targeting option. This is just to get you started. Um, you wanna just basically make sure your ads are, you know, you wanna just get started, right? So let's just take this link put this in the video urls so it's going to pull the video up and you want to click on skippable in stream you're going to add your url landing page url display url so if you have a really paid long landing page url you want to shorten that down and you want to include this because this creates this big blue button which increases your click through rates massively with a call to action and headlines so it's like dog training so that's that so yeah that's how you train uh, I mean that's how you set up your first YouTube ad campaign with keyword targeting um, so another targeting option that I also use a lot uh, and it, I highly recommend to starting out is basically using placements so with placements you target specific videos using a tool like StubeSift you uh, you want to get 200 to 300 placements and then you can use this to target competitors channels as well right so you can literally target your competitors videos now I'm going to show you how to set that up so the tool I use is TubeSift I'll have a link to uh, TubeSift in the video description so you can also sign up for them so let's say you're in the dog training space so we click on dog training click search and this will find videos that are really relevant to dog training right and you can even use this like if you want you can put your competitors name in here and you'll find your competitors keywords the only thing i want to really remind you guys is if you're using placement targeting right which is targeting specific videos um there is the option of targeting channels like a whole channel the issue is i've never seen that work like it never delivers so if i want to target a specific channel uh, i think i got enough videos if i want to target a specific channel i will just put in the channel name and it will just show me all the videos from that channel right I'll, I'll get the individual videos from the channel and upload it to Google instead of targeting one channel uh, I'll show you what I mean in a second so anyways we got these videos get the links you can copy and then go into Google so now instead of um, using keyword targeting right in this campaign we're gonna do placements and you want to add in YouTube uh, enter multiple placements and you want to add that in and there we go so as I mentioned do not do this YouTube channels do not target an individual YouTube channel let's say if you want to target like a YouTube channel that's not gonna work right so if you want to target somebody like let's say um, Frank Kern right don't do this do not target this because it won't run what you want to do is go to that channel put in that uh, go into TubeSift go into by channel and add in the url of the channel so you want to add in frank kern's url here and it will pull up all of his videos and then you'll copy that list and you'll take that 200 videos or 300 videos and then you'll target them on google that's going to actually deliver if you just target the channel url itself most of the time it just doesn't deliver for us from what we've seen so yeah that's how you set up a placement campaign and uh yeah very very cool uh, and very easy to get started with and you can even go for your competitors you can go for you know whoever you want now the next step is the first campaigns right so um, as I mentioned you want it to, to be a CPV campaign already showed you guys all of this uh, you want to use the keyword that we found in or the keywords or the placements we found in the previous step so again um, with a campaign structure it's one campaign one ad group 45 keywords or one campaign one ad group and 100 to 300 placements is usually my preferred structure so you don't want to make sure you want to make sure your keywords and placements are in different campaigns and you want to make sure you're keeping yourself to 45 keywords in one campaign or 200 to 300 placements in one campaign so that way you're keeping things separate at a later point you can try mixing things together and so on but for now you want to keep things simple and clean so we're going to use um, basically an in-stream ad as i showed you 
And also, this is really important. You want to dis disable video partners on the display network. Um, so that's, yeah, you want to, you can do this later, like this is an advanced thing, but usually it doesn't perform very well. So I want to keep YouTube videos for in-stream ads and YouTube search results, this is only for video discovery ads. So you can't really use it in this case anyways. So yeah, so, and then as I mentioned, you want to start with a bid, 20 cents, 25 cents, raise it if it's not running, if, the, if traffic, if uh, you're not getting any views, if you're not getting any clicks, you might want to raise it because the bid might be too low in certain niches. Now, how do you actually analyze the results of your first campaign, right? Like how do you actually look at your first campaign and be like, hey, this went really well or this went really badly? So you want to, number one, let it run for a few days, spend like 80 to $100, right? Just to see, you know, get enough data, um, especially if you're selling something like uh, that's, you know, like that's a little bit higher priced. So number one thing you want to look at is your click-through rate. If your click-through rate is above 1%, that's a very good sign. If it's above, uh, if it's 1.5 to 2%, you've got a killer ad. Uh, below 1%, I think you need to reshoot your ad, right? Next step, what was CPV like, right? What was the cost, view, cost per view like? Uh, if your cost per view is one cent to two cents, you can reduce your bid, you're in a less competitive niche. If your cost per view is, you know, like 0.17 or 0.18, it's like up there, then you're in a more competitive niche where you're gonna have to spend more per view. Um, so that's good to know because then you know what your niche is like, if it's more competitive or not. Uh, what was your landing page conversion rate, right? Like, so if you deliver, you know, let's say if you generated, you know, 50 clicks, how many people converted into a lead, right? So let's say 12 people uh, converted into a lead, it's 12 divided by 50, it's, I don't know, it's like 20%, 25% conversion rate. So that's pretty good opt-in rate. So you want to see if your landing page is converting. If your landing page is not converting, if the opt-in rate on your landing page is less than 15%, then you'll probably need to redo your landing page from scratch. Um, and just try out a different variation. And you should be testing landing pages whenever you can, right? Try to get that opt-in rate higher. And then what's your cost per lead and cost per book call? So cost per lead gives you, um, you know, basically a good idea of like, hey, is your landing page working? Is your message working, etc. And then cost per book call is basically shows you, hey, are, um, are people actually booking your call? Is your VSL or webinar good enough? So what we've usually found is with our best clients, um, if the cost per lead is around $10, then the cost per call is around $50. So, you, you know, they're converting 20% of leads into calls. Even if you're converting 10% of leads into calls, that's reasonable. You wanna make sure the metrics are in line so you're uh, hitting a reasonable cost per call and that will depend on the business itself, right? So for the first week, you wanna aim for, your, just, your goal is to just get some data, right? Get, see what the CTR is, get some leads in. Honestly, you're probably gonna be, you know, even if you're getting $25 leads, that's good enough for the first week because you're just buying data, right? Um, you wanna have some rules set up like pause ads that are spent $50 without a lead, pause any campaigns that are spent because you'll probably have multiple ads in a campaign. So you wanna have a tighter rule for your ads, right? So for your ads, you wanna pause them if they spend $50 without a lead. And for your campaigns, you want to pause them if they spend $75 without a lead pause any keywords that spend $50 without lead. And you can make this tighter as well. This is initially to start with. What will happen is those numbers will come down. So in week three and four, you'll probably pause any ads that spend $25 without a lead. For now, you just wanna, uh, you, the, for now you're just starting out. So you are going to have to spend more per lead. You're just trying to get those initial leads in. Now, once you pause ads or campaigns, uh, you wanna make sure you have other campaigns ready to go so you can launch old ones to replace uh, new ones to replace the old ones that you paused. So as I mentioned, if your CTR is less than 1%, then you need to shoot a new video ad. And keep an eye on your opt-in rate. If it's less than 15%, you need a new landing page. If it's higher, you can still keep split testing landing pages, but it's not an urgent need. So a few tips. If campaigns aren't spending, you wanna increase bids for CPV campaigns wherever you can. Um, if campaigns are spending and doing well, you wanna increase your budget. You know, if you're getting $10 leads, then you can increase your budget. And after you hit 50 conversions in your account, you wanna take your best performing CPV, which is cost per view bidding campaigns and duplicate them as target CPA. Bid at 1.5X your target CPA goal. So if you wanna get leads at $15, 
for target CPA bidding, you want to set your bid as $22, right? Or if you want $10 leads, set the bid at 15. You can reduce that bid as time goes on. Right now, you just want the algorithm to start working and you know start basically get get those target CPA campaigns running and starting to get conversions. Here's something really important. Do not freak out. Look, with YouTube ads, you need to put in the work to get the cost per lead down. Initially, a cost per lead might be super high. Um, we've sometimes had campaigns start at 60 to $70 a lead on week one, and by the end of month one, we're paying three to $6 a lead. So your cost per lead will go down a lot. So chill out, just follow the process, test audiences, test video ads. Uh, just keep in mind what I said about the optimization metrics. And you know, it's part of the YouTube game. Facebook is a lot easier to start with, but a lot harder to scale. But what do you want? Do you want to be profitable at $300 a day or do you want to be profitable at $5,000 a day? Because YouTube allows you to be profitable at $5,000 a day a lot easier, but that initial hump is just going to be harder. So yeah, YouTube is harder to start with, but easier to scale. Now the biggest increase in performance is will happen when you switch from CPV bidding to target CPA bidding. So as I said, when you have 50 plus conversions in the account, that's when that will happen. You will get a big, big boost in performance. Uh, at that point, expect CPL to drop by as much as 50%. You want to focus on getting your cost per lead down initially with CPV campaigns, and then once you hit 50 to 70 conversions, you start to target CPA campaigns, and that's when your account will start working beautifully. It, that probably will happen a few weeks in. So the first few weeks, just accept it. You're going to lose money. You're not going to get cheap leads. You're gonna pay too much, and you're just gonna feel frustrated. Accept that, and then a month in to a month and a half in, things will start working, and things will be dialed in, and you'll be profitable, and you'll be happy you went through that initial pain period. And you're on your way. So you've taken the first step to being profitable with YouTube ads. I'm very, very happy that you know, you've done that and hopefully you can make your high ticket call funnel work really well with YouTube advertising. Now, here's the thing. You wanna keep optimizing your funnel, right? So you wanna make sure that your ads are um, on point, but you also wanna make sure your funnel is on point. So what a good metric for opt-in rates, right, which is the front end of your funnel, is uh, if you're doing 15 to 25%, that's a great opt-in rate. Great is 25 to 40%. That's where you're doing super well. Amazing is 40% plus. If you're getting a 40% opt-in rate on your VSL or even on your webinar, it's incredible. Keep, you know, um, at that point, I think that point of the funnel is really good. Likewise, you wanna keep an eye on the percentage of leads that convert into book calls. So a good metric is around 10%-ish. 20% is amazing. Um, two to three percent is really bad. If you're getting two, you know, let's say if you're getting 50 leads and only uh, two of them are booking a call, which is one out of 25, which is like a five, four percent opt-in rate, uh, sorry, four percent lead to call rate, that's really bad. So in that case, what you need to do is redo your VSL and also work on your follow-up sequences via email marketing. So you wanna make sure you're keeping eyes on your different metrics. Um, you really wanna keep Facebook and YouTube separate, different funnels, different calendlies, different email follow-ups, and different email automations. And that's just gonna allow you to really know at the end, hey, I spent $10,000 on YouTube and I made $30,000 back because you know that there's, uh, they're separate funnels. Obviously, there'll be some crossover, people will opt into both, and that will be interesting to see, but you wanna just keep that uh, done. Um, and yeah, you wanna tag people you know, in Active Campaign or Infusionsoft as YouTube leads. So when they do buy, you can take that email address and compare it to you know, which uh, traffic source they came from. So now how do you scale this from, uh, from this, you know, just starting out as a beginner to $1,000 a day? So keywords can get you great profitability, placements can do you well as well, then you need to expand out. So one audience that works really well for us is custom intent audiences, custom affinity audiences, similar audiences, and there are others as well like topics and affinity audiences. For us, custom intent and custom affinity audiences are working really well, especially custom affinity is really cheap. So custom affinity is based on the websites that people like to visit. So you, know, you, you plug in a URL and Google will find people that are similar to people that visit that website. So you can plug in your competitor's custom uh, URL and create a custom affinity audience out of that. And uh, yeah, that's, then you can just use that to target people. So you actually, the way you do that is you go into tools and settings, go into audience manager, um, and um, you wanna create custom audiences. 
So this is an example of a custom affinity audience. We basically took a bunch of Facebook ad keywords and turned that into a custom affinity audience, right? So this is like a very, very cool way to do it. And you can even add in URL. So you can literally add in like digitalmarketer.com as a URL. Um, so yeah, and usually they suggest five options, but we've literally taken custom affinity audiences from one URL and use that and that's worked beautifully as well. So um, I actually have a really in-depth training on kind of how to do this in my course, but uh, this is kind of a brief overview. The other audience type that's really interesting is similar audiences, which is essentially look alike audiences. So you need to have 50 grand in account spend before you can use similar audiences. But once you do and you upload an email list from your list or from your buyers list, you can create similar audiences. So Google will find people that are similar to people who purchased from you or opted in. So that's really great as well. That's worked especially well for us in e-commerce, but it, it can also work for you if you're selling high ticket info products or offers. Now the last thing is for really scaling hard, you need to test creative. You've been scaling past $1,000 a day. You need to be testing at least four to five new video creatives every single month, right? Like you really, really need to do that. Uh, your video ads can get fatigued. You wanna try different video ads. Sometimes you'll get a video ad that will just run well for like a year, but many times video ads will fatigue after three to four months and you wanna test different messaging, different hooks and different angles. Uh, at a certain point, you will also want to split test your funnel. So actually with one of our most successful clients, we split tested a VSL versus webinar funnel, VSL funnel outperformed, and we doubled down on that, made that work. So sometimes, you know, if things are really not working, then you might need to try a different funnel because this current funnel is not working with the YouTube audience. And that happens, like sometimes the funnel works well on Facebook and doesn't on YouTube and vice versa. So it's important to keep that in mind, right? So that's pretty much it for what I had. Hopefully that video was really useful. Uh, again, I think that high ticket call funnels are really profitable, really great funnels. If you're not already doing it, I would highly advise you do. Now, if you are somebody who has a high ticket offer and you want to scale things and you want to get the volume of calls, like as I showed you, like 3,700 calls for one client, which was incredibly profitable, the incredibly profitable to the point of like over seven figures generated in that month. Um, if you are an info product or a high ticket seller and you want us to perhaps run your ads for you or even get, uh, audit your ad account, uh, reach out to me. I'll include a link below to book a call with me. And if you want to do this on your own, I also have a link to my YouTube ads course that you can check out below, which can give you this information and help you get started. So thanks for watching this video. Subscribe or hit the like button if you liked it. And really looking forward to you know chatting with some of you. Comment below if you have any questions. Cheers. With our feet on the ground and we will talk with our head in the clouds and we will walk with